all in rush as I try to explain to your listeners, if I interrupt you, it's just to move you along so we can cover more territory. So let me start with... I have given you the... Go ahead. I've given you the dispensation on that. They're very much aware of this that might happen, and you're cool. You, 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 <laughs> okay, you I, I papal dispensation. You're gold. Let's start with the Russia you're investigation and the announcement of an indictment uh, alleging a sophisticated Russian scheme to try to interfere with the 2016 presidential election. Here's what candidate Trump said about all of this during the campaign and what the deputy attorney general said on Friday. It could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? The defendants allegedly conducted what they called information warfare against the United States with the stated goal of spreading distrust towards the candidates and the political system in general. Now, I want to emphasize that there is no evidence, and the Deputy Attorney General made it clear, no evidence of any collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. But doesn't this indictment disprove what Mr. Trump has been saying all along, that any talk about the Russians is a hoax and that the special counsel investigation is a witch hunt? I would be very careful if I were President Trump here. You know, this is just one of many different areas the special counsel is investigating. And without getting into details of this, because I think this is, everybody's trying to affect the outcome of elections, Chris, and everybody's poisoning the Internet. Everybody's doing it. Both parties, um, insane lunatic individuals. The Russians are pikers, actually, compared to Americans doing this. The problem is that it's illegal for them to do it. The danger for the president is it would be very, I think, uh, seductive for him to embrace this, totally embrace, say, see, see, I've been vindicated. The worst thing he could do in his, in his world is to validate this whole investigation by claiming victory here, because what if down the road there is another indictment or a series of indictments that do name Trump or do name the uh, uh, Russians and, and Trump campaign colluding, because that's what this is about. This is about getting Trump, Chris. This whole thing is about setting Trump up for impeachment if the Democrats win in 2018. This Donald Trump remains in the crosshairs. He is the target. And there is no let up in that, no me, matter me, what me, this indictment does or doesn't say. Let me pick up on that, because you say that the real scandal here is the effort by the Clinton campaign and the Obama administration to try to sabotage candidate Trump and now President Trump. Well, there's no question about it. And if you look at this indictment, I've had people say, does this mean that Hillary could be indicted or or Fusion GPS? No, because this indictment doesn't charge anybody with, with collusion. It says they've defrauded the United States with mail fraud and wire fraud. And you can't get the, the Fusion GPS or steal people. The real collusion. And there's no question about this. This is a paid political opposition research document that was made to look like legitimate intelligence. It perhaps was used to defraud the FISA court. You're talking about the, the, the Steele dossier here. Steele dossier and, and pretty much everything that they've used. I mean, every story. I, I was on this program one year ago, one year ago, and I told you that this whole thing, that Trump colluded with the Russians, was bogus, that there was never going to be any evidence for it. It did not happen. Every news story about it since then has included that, just like this indictment right here. No allegation in the indictment that any American was a knowing participant, nor is there any allegation the scheme affected the outcome but, but of the election. Let, Bingo! But, Rush, let me ask you. I mean, There isn't... The there president's, isn't going to be. The president's top foreign policy advisor in the campaign in the first couple of weeks of his White House, uh, General Michael Flynn, has pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI. So as another campaign advisor, George Papadopoulos, aren't you at least curious to find out what they have to say? Well, in the Flynn, I'm glad you bring that up. In the Flynn episode, we have learned since that the people that conducted the interview with Flynn, Peter Stroke, did not believe he lied. A number of other people in the FBI did not believe Flynn lied. And yet, Flynn's under indictment, cops a plea for lying. So what, was Flynn what, told? So what, wait a minute, why do you think he pleaded guilty? I mean, it wasn't an indictment, he pleaded guilty. I, maybe he wasn't told, well, because they had run him dry. His family was being destroyed, his, uh, his financial net worth was destroyed, he was being broken. He had to, he had to stop the bleeding. 
the question was, what was Flynn told by the FBI, by James Comey? Was Flynn told by the special counsel? By the way, the FBI does not believe you lied in their interview, in your interview with them. Um, that seems to me to be crucial. And the new judge in this case, I think, is going to take that up. So I, I, I think this is all politics. And it's, Chris, it hasn't changed from, from the get-go. It is about protecting Hillary and Obama. Obama is the primary person being protected here because all of this spying and all of this collusion to destroy Trump happened with his knowledge and probably encouragement. All right. And the reason Hillary isn't charged is because that would mean Obama would have to be exposed as participating in the scheme, too. All right. Let's move on to immigration. Uh, the Senate voted down four proposals this week, everything from the president's basic plan to a bipartisan plan. On your radio show, you recently said that you would be willing to grant citizenship to all of the dreamers in return for full funding for the border wall. And at a, at a certain point, after a lot of pressure, the Democrats seemed to agree to that, and the president demanded more. So what's, what's going on here? Well, I, this is actually take a lot to unpack. Uh, I don't th it's a political issue that the Democrats do not want solved. Uh, well, all this is is an effort by the Democrat Party to provide for themselves a current underclass. They need a permanent underclass that is dependent on the government for their survival. That's why they want illegal immigrants granted citizenship. Uh, they don't want the issue solved. They don't want any issue solved, legislatively or otherwise, before the 2018 elections. And I think Trump is partially exposing that with the various different proposals that he's making. He's giving them pretty much what they want, and they're turning it down uh, because they don't want it solved. I, I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll make you another deal right here. I'll make it. I would be willing right here to support an effort to grant permanent citizenship to whatever number of illegal immigrants there are in the country tomorrow, if you will make as part of the deal, they can't vote for 15 to 25 years. And if they will agree to that, then I'll grant them amnesty. Well, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Uh, let me turn to a couple of well, other... Well, you see how many takers you'll get. You'll get zero takers on that on the Democrats. Well, unfortunately, you're Proving not able... You're, not not, able, they, well, you, they don't you're pretty powerful, but I'm not sure you can make that deal on behalf of Congress and the president. But it's a pretty interesting offer. Let me, I, let me tr turn to the president. Mm -hmm. You say in year right. one that Donald Trump has had one of the most productive years, not first years, any years, of any modern president. Explain. Well, it's, it's undeniable. I mean, you look at the economy just this first year, compare it to the eight years of Obama, uh, even the last, the last 12 years, if you want to. We have not had this kind of economic revival in the economy. Wall Street's been going crazy for a long time, but in the economy, in the, in, in the place where people work, the people who make the country work, their lives are changing dramatically, overwhelmingly, economically. Look at all the wage increases, the new jobs, the bonuses, and the expansion of, uh, of benefits. Uh, the president is delivering on many of the things that he committed to and promised. And the Democrats demagogued and lied about this tax cut, telling everybody their taxes were going to go up. The Democrats now are beginning to regret. They can see the polling data. They can see that people are starting to really love this tax reform bill because they're finding out the Democrats lied to them about it. And there's not one Democrat fingerprint on it. There's not a single Democrat that can claim any credit for this massively booming United States economy. But, Rush, they, um, uh, let, let, yes. let, me, let me just pick up on one last thing, because he certainly deserves credit for a lot of things, but he failed to repeal Obamacare, he and the Congress. Uh, he uh, has approved this new spending plan, which is going to add half a trillion dollars to our national debt over the next two years. Does that disappoint you? Do you hear about it from any of your listeners? You know, it, that, that, now that is a fascinating question. In terms of this budget-busting spending, I haven't had one caller complain about it. I'm sure I will now, <laughs> but I haven't had one. And it, it's been surprising to me that there hasn't been a single complaint compared to the spending complaining that was doing back in 2010 Tea Party was founded. Um, but I think this, the, the, the massive size of these deficits is not going to be as large as predicted because of the tax cut. There's going to be revenue flowing into Washington. They aren't counting. It's still going to be, I mean, it's, it's deficit building. There's no question, but it's not going to be nearly as high and as bad as people think it is. 
What, what was the other thing you asked about? The, uh, you, got, the, uh, you got about 45 uh, seconds. Obamacare. Obamacare. Well, we got rid of the individual mandate. Uh, that's That's been proposed. That's the guts of it. Formal repeal and replace, yeah, that, that hasn't happened. Um, maybe a mistake to do it first, not sure. But hey, this is just the uh, second year. There's all kinds of time to come back and fix a bunch of things if you want. We're just getting, they, they are just getting started. Rush, thank you. Thank you for joining us again today. Folks, again, when I interrupted, it was just to move along so you could hear Rush on more subjects. It was fine. Rush, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. Come back. It's anytime you want me, I'm here.